Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have another tabletop review and comparison for you. We will be looking at the new Taurus G3 and also comparing it to the Glock 19 Generation 5. This is going to be an overall just spec by spec comparison of the two, so if you are considering your next standard size 9mm sidearm, you will have an idea of which one will probably fit your needs the best. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and and jump into it now. Okay, let's start this off with the unboxing. So the Taurus G3 comes in a cardboard box. You have your cable lock, warranty, instruction information, and then you have the sidearm here in a little plastic bag. Get that chamber indicator out of there. We are clear. So the firearm does come with one 15 round magazine inserted and you do have a 17 round spare magazine with a little extension plate right here to kind of cover that gap there for you. So that's pretty much it. Now the Glock 19 does come in the Glock hard case that we all know and love today. Comes with one 15 round magazine inserted and two additional 15 round mags as well. A little speed loader cable lock, cleaning rod and brush, and your interchangeable back plates. Now, like I said, this does come with the three 15 round magazines, but a Glock 17 round mag or the 33 round stick mags will fit. So you are not just limited to the 15 rounds. Just like on the Taurus G3, you get a 15 and a 17 round, the Glock can do the same as well. Okay, let's jump into the spec comparison. So the Taurus G3 does have an overall length of seven and a quarter inches, whereas the length on the Glock 19 is six and a quarter. So you have a full inch shorter on the Glock 19. Now the height on the Taurus G3 is 5.2 inches, where on the Glock 19 it is 5.04 inches. So about 0.15 inches shorter on the Glock 19, pretty close. The barrel length on both is the same, sitting at four inches. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the empty weight the unloaded weight on each. Starting here with the Taurus, we are at one pound, 8.5 ounces. And the Glock, one pound, eight ounces. So we are about half an ounce lighter on the Glock, pretty negligible and pretty similar in weight. Now let's bring in the slides for comparison. So the Glock 19 is machined out of a single piece of bar stock and does have the NDLC coating, which is an ion bond product, which was new to the generation five. You are gonna notice the bevels at the front end of the slide. That was also a new addition to the full size firearms on the generation five. Now there are slide serrations in the back, not on the front. Glock does have an offering for a front slide serration option, as well as an MOS plate up here at the top. If you wanna do that, keep in mind, you are gonna pay more for that option though as well. Now up at the top, you will notice your sights are on the standard Glock UDOT configuration. The sights are polymer in construction. The rear sight is drift adjustable for windage. The front sight is not adjustable at all. It is pinned in place underneath the slide. So if you want to remove that, you need a Glock tool or the proper size hex wrench to do sight replacements on that. The extractor here doubles as a loaded chamber indicator. It is a tactile indicator. So when there is a round chamber, the uh, it, the extractor, I'm sorry, will protrude slightly, exposing this ridge, which you can feel to confirm that there is a live round in the chamber. Now on this side, you do have all your roll markings, Glock, Generation 5 Glock 19, made in Austria caliber designation there as well. Now the Taurus G3 slide is also machined from a single piece of bar stock and does have a matte black finish, same as the G2C. Now you are gonna notice there are slide serrations on the back as well as on the front. If you wanna do any type of press checking, here are your G3 roll markings there extractor here. Now at the top, you are going to notice there is a loaded chamber indicator. The sights are also polymer in construction. The front is fixed in place, just like it is on the Glock. The rear is drift adjustable and dovetailed. The sights are in a three dot configuration as well. Also, you're going to notice the beveling on the front end of the slide, just like on the Glock, that will help uh, guide your firearm back into its holster. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger pull weight, starting here with the Taurus G3. And it does come in at five pounds, 3.3 ounces. And the Glock 19. Five pounds, 6.8 ounces. So they are roughly about the same with the Taurus G3 coming in at about three ounces lighter. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger pull starting here with the Taurus G3. So it is polymer in construction. You are going to notice the trigger safety here at the front, similar to a Glock. The front of the trigger itself is a lot wider than like on the Taurus G2C, also wider than on the Glock, so you do have a lot more room there for the pad of your finger. Anyway, if we go ahead and start depressing that, 
initial take up is pretty long. Free movement there until you hit that wall. Go ahead and start to pull through. That's where you're gonna feel that five and a half pound trigger pull. There is an over travel stop here on the back of the trigger you'll see. Now, reset, start to release. Right there's the reset. So a very short reset from there, right into a clean break. Actually very smooth reset, very smooth break. The only complaint on this, of course, is that initial take up is usually pretty long. Now you will notice that if I let go without re-racking the slide, it does have double strike capability. So from there, this is a little bit heavier if you're on the double strike. You can double strike it again, of course, if you get a light primer strike or anything like that. So you do not have to reset the slide in order to get follow-up shots if you need to. Now the trigger here on the Glock also is polymer. You're gonna see that there is that trigger safety device there as well. And the front of the trigger is a little bit slimmer than on the Taurus G3. If we start to pull, there's a little bit of creep right there. A little bit of that classic Glock trigger sponginess. But from there, go ahead and pull. Nice clean break. Reset. Pretty quick, go ahead and pull again. Show that one more time. So actually, I'm gonna say the initial take up on both is a little bit creepy. On the clock, you get to that wall a lot quicker. Trigger, in my opinion, it's a better break and a quicker reset. So I do like the trigger on the Glock a little bit more, but like I've said in a lot of my previous videos, I am fond of Glock. I do carry the Glock 17. I'm done try and hide that. Now, of course, you do not have double strike capability. That trigger stays to the back unless the slide is manipulated. So there is that one plus there for the Taurus. All right, let's go ahead and get into the disassembly, starting here with the Glock 19. Start by removing the magazine and checking that we are clear. You do need to go ahead and pull the trigger. Now from here, you bring the slide back just partially, and there are two takedown tabs on either side. Go ahead and pull those down. Release the slide and it'll come right off the frame. Double guy rod and spring, push out the barrel, and that is field stripped. Now the Taurus G3 is gonna be very similar to the Glock. Start by removing the magazine, checking that we are clear, and we are. Okay, so from here, you're gonna pull back on the slide, just like on the Glock, pull down in these two takedown taps, just like on a Glock, and start releasing the slide. Now from there, this is the only way I know how to do this. Go ahead and then pull the trigger there. That'll release the slide. Pull out the guide rod and spring. It is a double guide rod, a captive recoil spring, just like on the Glock. Push out the barrel, and that is field stripped. We'll take a look at the frames, starting here with the Glock 19. Of course, it is fully polymer in construction. Now, the Generation 4 went to this more aggressive stippling, and then on the Generation 5, they deleted the finger grooves. You do have this little cutout down here, which does bug some people, and it is my understanding that Glock has on some of their models or all of their generation uh, five Glock 19s have kind of gone away from that. The point of that is so you can reach in there and snag the lip of your magazine and quickly extrude it out the bottom. Now they did flare out the bottom of the magazine well. It's another change they did on the generation five. Again, for guiding in that magazine a little bit easier. You'll notice here on the back, there is this pen which you can drift out and use as interchangeable back straps we saw in the unboxing to change the, uh, the contours of the grip there. Now the magazine release itself is polymer and it is reversible. It is set up for a right-handed shooter out of the box, but it's easy to change over to the left, or sorry, to the right side of the pistol if you are a left-handed shooter. Now up at the front, there is some rail space if you want to run a light or a laser. Here you're going to notice an ambidextrous slide stop. There is no manual safety on a Glock. Of course, you just have that uh, little trigger safety here. These are your takedown levers that we use to disassemble the firearm. Now all of your internal important components, guide rails, uh, ejector, trigger bar, all that stuff is going to be steel and construction, reinforced where it needs to be. So yeah, pretty simple Glock frame. Okay, here on the Taurus G3, the frame is polymer here as well. So you, the texturing here is nice, much like the G2C, you do have more of a gritty sandpaper type texturing here along the back and on the front strap. There is no finger groove placement, which is similar to the Glock 19. Now there is no interchangeable back, tra back strap system, that's okay for most people. Now you do have a section of rail up here at the front if you do want to run a light laser or anything like that. These are your takedown taps. Now here, there are no ambidextrous controls here, but you can remove the magazine release, which is polymer, and put it over here on the right side of the pistol if you are left-handed and you want that magazine release over here. You do have a manual safety control on the frame, which you did not have on the Glock. 
And of course, here is your slide release here. All of your internal components, much like on the Glock, are steel in construction, your guide rods, your ejector, trigger bar, all of that, reinforced where it needs to be. So nice, there's of course your uh, trigger safety, so you do have two safety features there, a little bit safer than on the Glock if you like those safety features there for you. So let's go ahead and jump into some takeaways here. And the biggest one is gonna be the difference in price. So the Taurus G3 MSRP is about $350, but honestly, you're gonna find it on most retailer shelves for about the $250 price point, just a hair higher than the Taurus G2C. Now that could be mainly because right now they just released, prices are gonna be a little bit higher. We may see them equalize around the price of the Taurus G2C, which is gonna be anywhere between two and $230. The Glock 19 Generation 5 is gonna run you between about five and 550, probably about the 530, 540 range in the standard base model in a Generation 5. Now, Generation 4, which are still in production, uh, can be a little bit cheaper than that, or you can get things like the MOS optic plate system here on the top, uh, the ones that come standard with night sights, which of course are gonna go up in price. As of right now, I believe the Taurus G3 in this configuration, nine millimeter, is the only version that they are making. It just released like this. So it might come out in other calibers and versions with night sights, different colors down the road. It's probably, which you know probably is going to happen. Now, seeing as that the Glock is twice the price of a Taurus G3, are you getting twice the gun? Well, you are getting some decided advantages in the price. You are getting interchangeable back straps. That's important to you if you want to change the grip uh, sort of modularity there. You have that option, whereas on the Taurus, you do not. I personally believe the trigger on a Glock is a little bit better than on the Taurus uh, G3. Not by miles, but noticeably better. You don't have the double strike capability on the Glock that you do on the Taurus G3, so keep that in mind if that sort of thing is, is uh, important to you. But about right there, that's kind of where the sort of characteristic differences or advantages in the Glock stop. So is that worth double the price tag? Maybe not, probably not. Uh, in my case, no. I do like Glock handguns, so it's funny. I would personally spend my own money on the Glock just because it's, it's what I'm comfortable with and what I'm familiar with. Would I knock or downplay the quality of the Taurus G3? Well, the Taurus G2C, which was a revamped sort of change design of the PT Millennium Pro, uh, that, ha that had been on the market now for, I, gosh, I think it's been about six or seven years. The consumer reports on them have actually been really good. I mean, people have really liked them. They've proven to be reliable. They are a really good firearm for the money. They're not really cheap, they're just inexpensive. So if you are on a tight budget, or even if you don't wanna spend the $500 on something like a Glock or an XD or an m and a G2C or a G3 is a phenomenal option. Your uh, capacity is about the same starting off with a 15 and a 17 round mag. Of course, you can get your capacity in the Glock up to that as well. Uh, your size on the Glock 19 is a little bit smaller, but the G2C characteristics or the size uh, specifications and everything like that is still shorter than on the Glock 17. So you are right between sort of a 19 and a 17 in size. So you're not giving up a lot there. Weight is about the same. I think we determined we were at about three ounces heavier on the uh, Taurus. So. Again, not a huge difference there. The Glock 17 is probably gonna come in at about the same. So honestly, for the price point, I, again, I don't think you're giving up that much. Something that I personally would uh, be interested in, in sort of, if I was in the market for something like this, I would definitely give it a shot. Again, I don't think you're losing a whole lot in, in uh, sort of the reliability and the characteristics, the functions, the format, or anything like that in the Taurus G3 by giving up on that $250. Now, we do know there's an interesting book written by Paul Barrett, The Rise of America's Handgun. He kind of, he did an interesting analysis on sort of the marketing tactics of Glock and sort of broke down the cost to build one of these, which at the time would have been about $150 per unit to manufacture. So Glock isn't inherently made a very valuable material or anything like that. It's just sort of more of an inflated price point to create perceived value. That's not to say Glock isn't a great and reliable handgun. Like I've said many times, I am a fan of Glock. I carry a Glock 17. I have a Glock 19 in my nightstand. I know last time I said that people thought that that was kind of backwards. It's because when I'm in my gun store, I open carry. So I go for the one with higher capacity and I don't like to buy two of the same gun. So I have the Glock 19 at home, which again, I could put the 17 round mags in if I want to. So uh, going off in a little bit of a tangent, but anyway, G3, G2C, great option for that price point. Uh, probably honestly on the market, the best economical option that you can get sort of the most bang for your buck and that again, 200, $250 price point, getting a phenomenal package that has proven to be good quality and reliable. Now, with that being said, my own personal experience, I do let people know that hope you don't have any problems 
because Taurus customer service is pretty awful, one of the worst in the industry in my experience as a gun store. I have now sent two, yeah, two firearms back to Taurus. One actually um, took a little over a year to get back. The other one actually we sent in for a customer. It was one of the raging judges, which took, I believe, about six months to get back. In both cases, they just sent brand new guns as replacements. So they didn't even, you know, do any work on them. They just took six months to a year to get around to sending a replacement. So, um, and I'm a gun store and gun stores typically have better results with manufacturers than the average consumer. So take that for what you will. I know everybody's mileage is gonna vary on that, but just keep that in mind. Glock, I actually have never sent in any product to Glock's customer service. Actually, the only manufacturer, firearm manufacturer I've never had to deal with on warranty. So that does go to show you, or at least, in this sort of uh, anecdotal circumstance that the quality on a Glock is there. It is reliable and functional, but take that for what you will. I'm gonna leave you guys there. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.